All right, hello everyone, coming to you from Santa Rosa Beach. Um, we're at the retreat, I'm at the retreat, the ladies in the corner over there, got some ladies here. <laughs> um, and so they're listening in to our call here. Um, yeah, check it out, Nora's here, she's Hi. not in the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's been really fun. Jane's really real. I'm real. <laughs> it's a real person. Yep. <laughs> hey, Ginger. Welcome. Okay, welcome, uh, Terry. It looks like your audio is still going there, and Rebecca and Sandra. Um, Ginger, something's covering your camera, I think. <laughs> Alrighty. So, does anybody have any questions? Um, or concerns that we could address right now before I jump into the review. Any stories or experiences you want to share? How are you doing, Sandra? You're doing good. <clears throat> Just unmute yourself. I did it all the time. Um, now I feel great, thank you. Um, um, thanks for the time, um, for, for allowing me to have a session with you. I really enjoyed that, that was very good. Um, it, it's, it's quite, uh, it's a, such a good course to get to know you and to understand your family and your surrounding. And it's, it's, it's such a good reflection, thank you. I learned a lot about myself yeah. and um, you can see it back to your parents and even further. Yeah. How, how your family ha has worked and what shaped you in the person who you are. Mm -hmm. But the, what I really like that it is up to you to change okay, things. Okay, boys, you ready for some lunch? Yeah, it's up to us to change it. Yeah. Yes, yes. How? It's such a good tool. Mm -hmm. because you, you you roll in a busy life and you accept it and you just go with it and that's the things they always been like this and you accept that this is your normal but it doesn't have to be yeah um so you feel like you understand why when they say people were asleep oh i was so asleep because you fall into a role like for me, um, I changed life so much, like changing countries. And then it happened again. You get married and you have children and you just fall into this role. And, and I think with children, they're young. And then if you have a lot of children, you just go into this tiredness, like everyone goes into. And you keep on rolling with that, even they're grown up. And now I think, why? Why did I do that? Because you just actually accept it as, as the new normal and you think that's how it's been and always been, but it, it isn't and things changed and you don't have to keep on doing that, but you get stuck somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's funny how I, I can't actually believe I've done that. And, and it's so easily done. It was actually so easy to undo again. Yes. It wasn't that hard. And that's what stuns me all the time. I always looked for, very complicated, difficult solutions, but the solutions are very simple. They're that simple. Yeah, and that's God. And I love that. It doesn't have to be complicated. Us humans, we like to make it all fancy. <laughs> and we have to, we think it has to be fancy in order to work. We, we think it has to be fancy, expensive, but it can be really simple. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it simplified my life and it works so much better. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I love hearing that. So I pray that that's, that's going to be for everyone. You simplify your life. You understand yourself better. You recognize that you don't have to keep rolling with, with whatever life throws at you. Um, and then you can pause and be still and then intentionally make some choices, some really powerful choices. So... That's what we're going to cover um, in week five today. Uh, you know, you have the emotion chart in your flip chart here. Um, so you can ask 
those questions when you uh, have, a, you know, like we were talking about with Sayaka earlier with her hands or your know, shoulders or something, and you can say, okay, is there emotion that's attached to this? Um, why do we look for the emotion first? One of, one of the things that we do first is find the emotion. Why do we do that? Okay, so you can find the emotion, the fear and faith chart. So why do we find the emotion first? And, uh, and sometimes you can find the emotions in, in the oils that you muscle test. But why do we do that? What's the purpose? To me, it's a good launch pad. To me, it's a good launch pad. Like, I'm like, you're, sometimes, especially when you say, you know, what's wrong? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> and so to me, it's a good launch pad. And right. then you can start testing other things from, from that point. That's it. It's the starting point, launch pad. Um, so we start there and we go down into the subconscious under the surface of the tree and dig into the soil and say, why? What is the thought process and the belief that has caused me to feel this way? Because you want, we don't want to say, Ugh, I'm just angry. I don't know. It's blah. And that's not helpful. Yeah. So I love... I love what uh, Sayaka, she's like, hands. And then we find out what, what, what particular emotions are in the hands. Oh, yes, the emotion is frustration. That's right, that is what I'm feeling. <laughs> right, and then from that, great. Find the emotion, find the thoughts, find the beliefs, the exact beliefs, the exact thoughts, and choose to release it. Lucy? Yeah. Oh, I just think I, I find it really powerful because sometimes you don't actually really know what that emotion is. Yeah. And then when you muscle test and you're like, oh, okay. And then when you dig deeper into that and, and, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, that makes sense. And it just makes you, yeah, I feel like I've learned a lot more about what's going on inside of me by just muscle testing the emotions because sometimes I don't know exactly what it is but I know I'm feeling something. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and you're like, it's negative. I know it. It's just a negative, yucky feeling. Yeah. <laughs> and often, often that exact emotion is the one that comes up in an oil that you need to release. Yeah. That happens to me a lot. I was yeah. doing Armley yesterday and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Her fear emotions came up in the oils that we had to release a particular emotion and that was the one. Yeah. And it's sort of like all of these tools around you are, is rigged to give you a sermon. Don't you see? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah, we, for sure. we have those oils to kind of give us a hint. Um, but like with my daughter earlier, she just picked a handful of oils that she felt like another one, another one, another one. And she laid it down and she's like, no, this is not the right order. This is the order. And she looked at it again. And as she read each one, it was a beautiful message with each one and it kind of added to the other and added to the other and it kind of gave her the message that she needed to to hear today mm. yeah and you know sometimes you're not even aware that that programming is in the back of your mind yeah so i'll share with you um just a um an example of that so i'll take my my daughter's example because she shared it with people today so she picked an oil card. So we can pick an oil, pick an oil card, whatever it is that we pick. Sometimes people pick colors or crystals um, or, you know, certain, um, I don't know, uh, Michaela, my daughter, she likes flowers. So she, every flower has kind of an emotion to it as well. But anyways, so her first oil was peppermint. Peppermint, guys, is about heavy heart. So I, I asked her, is this yours? And she's like, no. And she found out that it's from grandpa on her dad's side. And she's like, huh, it keeps on coming up. You know, I mean, reaching for it or it just comes up in the scan. What is this? So this is, you know, when it comes up from generations, it's sort of like there, but you don't understand why. But you're in a situation that is almost identical or matching with one of your ancestors. So she's like, Grandpa, his name is Grandpa Bertinoli. So I said, Grandpa Bertinoli had to leave his family. Well, his, his parents had to leave his family, something like that. And then she's like, oh, I know what it is. 
she says i she's planning on becoming a missionary right and she's like i'm leaving my family and you know my heart is heavy and she she hasn't um she's been all, all excited and telling people she's excited but she hasn't told us that she's she's feeling that grief and so she's like oh you know i'm allowed to put words to my my feelings now and she started crying so it's sort of like she's healing for grandpa as well but this is her feelings that she's experiencing also and the next all that came up in the the row of cards that she picked was helichrysium the oil of transcend, transcending pain. And so what that oil is saying is heal the pain and let it pass through you. So it's, it's like, thank you for that instruction. Sometimes you like suppress it. You're like, I don't want people to see me sad or anything. But here this oil says, hey, transcend the pain. And so it was perfect. And she's like, intuitively, she wanted to put it over her heart. And so the next oil was the um it's called manuka oil of being sustained right so she uh, um just intuitively applied it on her forehead and um you know, I, I asked her why did you put it on your forehead right and she's like i don't know and she read it and she's like sustained like god will sustain me right and she says, okay, so when I go, God will help her. So each oil that came up was a different, was an, another another um, message to, uh, in the sermon. So the message was, you know, feel renewed, let go, let go of grief. And then Lyme is about live life fully. And I remembered um, a week or two ago, I told her, when you go and you help people, don't worry about home. Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. You know, don't um, feel like you need to check in on us or whatever. We're going to be fine. I want you to focus and focus on where you are, what you need to do and, and help people. Um, and then, you know, these things came up. It's sort of like reiteration of that same message. So cool, right? So it's not just the oils. We have lots of different tools that we can use, but I feel like if it's, you know, the God's creations, right? It kind of helps give us um, the message. When you put it all together and you see all of the, the clues, you understand the message. So, um, sorry, Sayaka, I'm picking on you today. Um, so, you know, with the hands, Right, we know hands hold on to things, right? And so, you know, we can have like little rashes and itches in any place. So if it's a skin irritation, it's about being irritated with yourself. And so you're like, yeah, I'm irritated with myself, but yes, about what? And then we're, we're talking about hands holding on to things or creating with the hands, because that's what the hands represent. And yes, we kind of like found the message, um, irritated with myself and not being able to create. And then when we found out the generations and the other message is about money, right? And about, is my job for reals, you know? There was just this, you know, not a real job thing. So it's awesome when you're like, ah, thank you, enlightenment. So we, we got the message. And we never have to wonder. Like God gives us that simple answer. So we ask a question and sometimes we just have to kind of discover it a little bit, but it's there. And I like what Sandra says, it's not like overly complicated. It's it, the answer is quite simple. Anyone have any comments there? Um, I had exactly that experience yesterday I actually spent a long time with my daughter <laughs> and it was really powerful really powerful and just listening to you saying it becomes a sermon the whole you know all of the oils together that's exactly what we were talking about with each oil that came up she could see yeah it was just putting this whole story together and then the finale was Naoli it's time to regenerate on it's time to rewrite your life 
-hmm. get rid of all this crap that's held you back mm -hmm. and just rewrite your life and she I feel it's taken a long time but I feel she's so open to this now mm -hmm. and so her healing she's really determined that um yeah she just because of what she's been through with her marriage relationship she was so hurt it just tore her foundation out from under her mm -hmm. that she's put on a lot of weight and psychologically like deep down it's to protect myself I don't want to attract another man I don't want to ever get hurt again mm -hmm. and so we're able to address all of that it was so powerful yeah so good and the message is start afresh Let's yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the whole, you know, femininity, you know, it, just everything that came up, the things that we released, because she's rejecting femininity. And so it all came out about how she's feeling and, and that the weight, that's a protection. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, she hasn't really cared about how she, how she looks. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't take care. So, no. Mm. But I'm excited because I feel like, this is going to give her a new lease of life and just, yeah. So good. Cause you know, with somebody that we love, we can say, we'll just eat better. Well, just sleep more. Well, just, you know. Yeah, no, it's so much deeper than that. There's so much cleaning out that has to be done yeah. emotionally. Yeah. And you kind of have yeah. to understand why did I think this? Why did I believe this? Why am I sabotaging yeah. myself? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, I get it. And then now they own it. So Yeah, well, that's I felt like we just turned a major corner yesterday. It is a continual challenge. And sometimes I'm like, oh, my gosh, Heavenly Father, please take this from her because he is like, he, he, he's a narcissist on steroids. So he's always gaslighting her. It's just constant. I'm like, how do you protect yourself from this, you know? It's just so bad yeah. yeah so um you know sometimes when we muscle test an emotion and we find that it's ours um we can find out uh, if we can't release it sometimes we're like yeah i'm aware of that and then you can release yeah. it find a change yeah. and if you can't release it sometimes it goes back to the past and um well, most of the time it goes back to your childhood all right, so um, I tell people that you just have to go back and talk to your younger self and resolve things with your younger self. Um, it's sort of like going to the soil and, you know, strengthening your roots and everything that's happened to you um, before you can allow yourself to grow. Yeah, what... well, that was interesting. I, I didn't even have to muscle test do a do childhood re regenerate generation because she was doing it herself yeah she was recognizing the very point where the whole weight thing became an issue for her and it was her first year in high school mm -hmm. where the PE teacher weighed all the girls oh. and shared the weight like this is how much you weigh and she was the heaviest and you know what she wasn't even a big girl she wasn't overweight she finds out years later when she went to a naturopath, she has incredibly heavy bones. But that, like she was doing it all herself. This is when I first felt I'm overweight. Like how humiliating to do that at yeah. high school. And I had no idea. She'd never shared that with me. And so here she is doing all this work herself and I'm just listening and just supporting. And, and it was so good. That's empowering, isn't it, for her to get a yeah. Go back. yeah. And you know, you, as an adult now, sometimes we think, yeah, this happened, so what? But then now, like with her, it's like, wait, that was something. <laughs> oh, I, it was big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so that created in her mind this, yeah, that I'm fat. And so. Yes. I would take her shopping and if we couldn't find jeans, I'd just say, look, you're an in-between size. And so she would take that as, and that was nothing intentional on my part. And so we were able to talk about all of that. And she understood that, you know, look, you know, you didn't mean that, but because of my mindset, this is how I interpreted that. 
Yes. Yeah. Oh boy. Liberating for her. Yeah. 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 Good. So childhood regression. Guys, do you have any questions about that? Have you tried it on yourself? Have you tried it on each other? People? Very powerful. <laughs> So if you haven't, go ahead and try that and just muscle test which what emotion is, um, you know, sometimes we just find an emotion. So is this emotion mine? Yes, it is. Can I clear it? No. Then do I have to find out more? Yes, I need to find out more. And then you go to the um, child. So it can be prior to conception or conception to birth, birth to 10, 10 to, to 11, 10 to 20, right? And then you just find out. Um, and you go to the age and sometimes um, you know right away and other times you're like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, right? And then you have to make the connections yourself. You have to find out, hey, this is the emotion and this is the time. What in this time area, this period, created this kind of feeling? It's a little bit of an investigative work. And sometimes, um, you know, you need to just sit on that and just um, ask, ask God to kind of help you. Um, other times, you you recognize it right away. With a with a friend or whatever, and when I do a session, I we don't have all the time in the world to sit around and go, what was that? What was that? So I muscle test an oil or muscle test a color if I have to, so because then it gives us a clue. Okay, here's more, here's more info, here's more info right yeah so if we get more info then um you know we might uh have a you know a better picture okay any questions on that So guys, um, let's go to the um, prior to conception a little bit. Uh, I don't know too much, to be honest, but if you guys, um, uh, you know, get prior to conception, sometimes it's just before you want to come down to earth and, you know, maybe something's happening in your family, maybe you got nervous and just uh, scared to come down. Okay, so that's, that's what I know about it. Um, if you have conception, Right, so that means in the womb somewhere, you can ask what's going on with mum and dad. You know, sometimes mum and dad, this is the shotgun wedding, like you were an accident or whatever, right? Um, or like my friend, his mama, she, her dad died while she was pregnant with him. So she had grief. And so he had this underlining grief with him all the time. And from that, oh, it's terrible. From that grief, she had a stroke while she was pregnant. And that was more trauma. And so this poor guy had all of these things in the womb. When he was born, you know, he's, he's all hypervigilant and, uh, you know, and just stressed all the time. And that's the pattern, right, that he had all his life. So one wife after the next, and then our business shut down, business grew, business, you know, people suing him, da, 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 da. It's like, oh my gosh, does this end? And so when I worked with him, it was like, what happened in the womb? And he says, well, people told me, you know, my, my mom's dad died and that was bad. And then, you know, my mom had a stroke after that. And I'm like, whoa, right? And so we kind of had to resolve that. So you can see how those things can affect, right, affect the child. Um, or um, vanish twins. Okay, so I'll tell you about it. Um, so like one in eight babies, um, one in eight pregnancies, sorry, um, are twin pregnancies. And um, a lot of times the, the extra or the uh, twin may have like dissolved or failed to thrive. Um, and then that child that's left behind feels like a failure, uh, feel like something's missing. Um, you know, they have, when they 
come into the world, they have this, this disease to please, they have a, a need to fix people, they feel alone, they feel let down. They want to connect with another human and they feel disappointed all the time. You know, like they just feel lost. And even if they achieve a ton of things, they always feel like a failure. Could have done more, could have done better. All right, so when we go back to that child, we can resolve it and say, it's not your fault. You know, your sister's still here. She's your guardian angel or whatever. And we say, name her, you know, acknowledge her or whatever. And it, it really changes the game. I had a lady friend, she's, uh, she just has this phobia of everything, of people. And so she's always hiding. She wants to fly, but she doesn't feel like she can. And then when we resolve that, she was able to, after about three months um, of, of energy balancing, she was able to book a flight and go to Bali. And she was like, you, you won't believe where I am now, right? I'm like, what? She's, I'm on the plane and I've got like 20 oils on. I'm strapped in my seat, but I'm on the plane. Um, so good, okay? Um, sometimes if it's a traumatic birth, like the cords wrapped around your throat or you know, it's too painful, too long. You know, the child can see the world as, the world is scary and traumatic. And, and they, they create drama because they, they just can't not have drama. They can't feel com comfortable with peace. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So anytime there's, everything's going well and it's peaceful, They'll start a fight or they'll do something that just creates more drama. So it's like, just, just save money. Just, not, not, you know, sometimes it doesn't work. And that's why we had to go back to the subconscious and go, what happened here? And then just resolve it. Okay. Um, boys with circumcision. That could be a trauma too. Okay. So I had a guy and he had to close his eyes. I forgive my mom and I forgive my, the doctor, you know, all of these, you know, little things that we didn't realize was a problem. Like something was taken from me and I don't know what it is. And it's like painful and okay. you know. So anyways, you acknowledge it, you address it with yourself and it needs to be the person. If it's you, you need to talk to you. So if you're guiding someone, they need to talk to themselves. You don't need, you don't give them these unsolicited advice. You can guide and just say, hey, why don't you tell your, yourself kind of something like this, but the child needs to hear it from you because you know exactly what you need to hear. Yeah. And then um, the last part, which is very important is accept and appreciate because we have faith that this is a school of love and that all the things um, that happen to us, God can help us consecrate it for our benefit. Maybe it was bad, but he can help us see the good in it at least. He can turn it around and help us see the, the silver lining. So, you know, instead of being mad at it and still focusing on it, let's have closure by appreciating the lessons. Even if it's a few lessons, there's still something to be, you know, benefit from. Otherwise, guess what? You're stuck at that age. Yeah. So you can talk about that, that problem over and over and over again at that age. You're not going to move forward because there's no closure. And I feel like that's one thing that's missing in a lot of people's healing is that closure um, through appreciation. And those pains that gives you um, this strength to do um, your life's purpose. Any questions or comments? Kate? Uh -huh, go ahead. I have a question, it's Rebecca. Um, regarding the like vanished twins, let's say, um, can the mother feel that mourning and clear that? And would it affect that, that baby who lived? Like, would it help heal any of that feeling of the twin who is missing their sibling or would it only heal the mother and the, 
living twin would have to deal with that separately? Um, yeah, good question. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I think both people need to resolve that. Both, okay. But Thank I think you. it affects the uh, living twin more. Okay. Yeah. Because they knew they were aware. Yeah, and mom is more. Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a video. If you just uh, do YouTube, Jade Bolden and um, childhood regression technique, there's a video there that you can share with your friends. Because it really helps people understand themselves. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, so if they understand it, then maybe they, they can let themselves begin the healing process. Yeah, because sometimes if people don't see that there's a problem, right, um, they're not going to, to let um, themselves heal. Yeah. So any other questions about the childhood regression technique? Sometimes it doesn't come up right away. Sometimes the first couple of um, sessions you do on yourself or others is, is all about here, releasing this emotion inherited from these people, um, you know, a release from this organ or whatever. And then maybe later on, something in the childhood comes up. Right, even if you had the best childhood, you know, there, there's challenges, all of us have challenges. All of us have baggage that uh, it might come, come up sooner or later. Um, anybody have stories or something that they feel inspired to share about the childhood regression? All right. So the next thing um, that we want to review is to resolve false beliefs and create enlightened beliefs. Okay. So you just have to find out what the actual false belief is. So you can muscle test and say, do I believe this? Do I believe that? And until it sticks and you say, oh, that's it. That's what it is. Sometimes you need to get really specific. All right. And once you find it, you can choose an equal and opposite um, emotion and uh, thought, right, based on your understanding of God. And then you can ask yourself, is this it? Is this good? So if it's a good, then you can stick with it. Sometimes we have the emotion book or you have these, um, these oil cards to give you an idea of what to um, come up with, right? And then say, how long do I say this for? Because what you're trying to do is just um, nurture the new belief, okay? And just uh, allow yourself to focus on um, rebuilding yourself. So with people, I say when we do a session, imagine it as me helping you open a door uh, to a new way of thinking and believing. But guess what? When you walked into the door, you need to go into the room and keep on walking, keep on creating and building in there. So what if it's like a walking into a garden and you don't just stand there at the gate, you need to go find those, those new plants and keep watering them every day. Because otherwise, you know, that healing session um, didn't do very good, you see? You've only started it and then it might, you might, um, you know, go back to thinking the same thoughts again or tempted to um, replant the same ideas. Okay, you've got to find those evidences and then keep nurturing it. Does that make sense? So write your affirmations. It has to be in the present tense. It has to be about you. Okay, it has to kind of have feelings, make it short and simple and do an I am. I am enough. I am loved. Okay, so practice um, creating your own affirmations. It's fun after a while, you, you get really good at it. 
Any questions or comments there? Good. Okay. So um, after you um, discover the new thoughts and beliefs that you want to adopt, um, you do something that I call mind over matter and matter over mind. So that's, you know, finding evidence, finding evidence to add to your file. Um, so um, what let's do, I can create money. We want to believe that I can create money. Um, so what you do is you say, I'm going to physically make a list of my incomes. So just tracking it. And over time you say, look, it's growing. There's my evidence that I'm making money. I can make money. You see, you just come up with something that helps you see more evidence. <clears throat> okay. So that's the proactive part in our healing. Um, I'm healthy. Okay. If it's a new affirmation for you, I'm healthy. You say, hey, I'm going to track how many miles I can walk. I am going to uh, physically um, use the supplements and track how many days I do it, you know, and make sure I don't forget. Right? If I'm remembering all the time, then, you know, I can use it as, hey, I've changed. Here's the evidence. I take supplements. Right? So what are some of your mind of a matter, matter of a mind switches? Sometimes just wearing new clothes. Sometimes just throwing out the old, saying, no, those old things, that's not me anymore. Right? So you've already released stuff, but physically you can go through the house and release old stuff too. My life is simplified. My life is simplified, but you can have a big mess all over, right? So my life is simplified and I'm going to look for things to simplify. Get rid of all the junk mail in your emails. Make sure you go to zero once a week at least. Sometimes I see people that have like hundreds or thousands of emails and I, I feel heavy and weighed down. <laughs> I'm like, can we go through and unsubscribe? <laughs> right? Just little things that help us feel like, you know, we've got this progression going um, that's supportive of that new affirmation. Okay. Who here needs the affirmation, I'm successful? Yeah. So go ahead and collect the evidence of um, people's uh, text or thank you cards or whatever it is. If I measure my success by how many lives I touch, okay, um, my husband helped me with this. He's like, Jay, that email? Save that in a folder. So when you're feeling down, I'm oh, a failure, go and read all those emails. I'm like, okay, that's good. Or I'll do a screenshot of people's text messages. Thanks, Jay, that helped me. And then I, I save that. And so I'm like, yeah, I am successful, right? Um, or this is, my, this is my calling. This is what I'm meant to do, right? So it's another form of I'm successful. So you can collect it and say, look, see, I'm changing lives and I needed to be here to be there for that person. And that's evidence that I am you know, heading the right direction. I'm serving in my calling. Okay. I'm a good mom. Who wants an evidence for that? <laughs> right? Because sometimes you're like, I'm a bad mom, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you want to say, yes, I'm a good mom. I'm a good mom. You can say that and say that, but what's going to help more is if you start collecting the evidence. There you go. My child's happy there. I helped her pray, you know, and just make a list or whatever it is, but you need to just collect as much evidence as you can, kind of like a lawyer. My husband, sometimes she says, Jade, who are you arguing for? Are you going to argue for yourself or against yourself? 
Because when I, I suck and look at all the things and the reasons why I suck, I'm the worst. And because, 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 right? And he's like, who are you arguing for? You're arguing against yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, you're right. So I'm a good mom. I'm a good daughter of God or whatever. And then find the evidence because, 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 because. Ah, I feel better. We're silly. We just go, oh, look at all the reasons why. And it's a negative. And then we expect to be happy after that. <laughs> like, oh, it's not going to happen. Does that make sense? Like find the evidence. And then, you know, when, when things happen in our lives, like uh, situations where people, um, you know, say stuff and you hurt, kind of like what Lucy said, sometimes, you know, you, you don't mean to say something, but they hear differently. They hear a completely different thing and they interpret it differently, All right? So we do that too. We may interpret things differently, All right? So when you have that, then maybe you've projected it. Maybe you've projected that, um, that uh, insecurity in you or you've projected something. Okay, and so you look at the situation as a mirror that is reflecting back at you. Maybe that's you. Um, my friend Kat, she said just now, she's like, if you spot it, you, you, you got it. <laughs> you spot it, you got it. It means maybe you spotted that, that issue. Um, maybe that's the problem that you have too. Because if it's not an issue, then um, why do you need to point it out in other people? Or when people say something, why did you hurt? If it's not it's something that is inside of you already, you, you wouldn't hurt, right? Do you have something that, um, that bothers you sometimes, guys? And it keeps bothering you? And maybe that's become a mirror now. So I have um, so and I used to whenever somebody was like I would manage people's emotions, and so like if somebody's really mad, I'd be like busy trying to like either tiptoe around them or. Um, or try and please them to make sure everything was okay. And now, um, now I don't do that, but, but like in my children, I see some of my children be in my word is manipulated by people's, um, uh, like strong personalities or strong reactions to things. And so I'll say things like, um, don't be manipulated. <laughs> and I know it's because I'm stating it because I'm like, don't be, don't be manipulated, like stand strong, um, have strong boundaries. Like, and so like, I'm practice, like preaching this thing. I'm trying to practice. Um, I feel like, yeah, you see yourself in them sometimes. And that's what bothers you. Cause you're like, ah, she's just letting those people, um, you know, control her. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Anything else? Have you guys recognized? What do you think can have you off? Um, what makes you really mad? Or what offends you? What hurts your feelings? I used to um, not like it when my husband tries to to argue with me and try to be right all the time. Have you had guys like that? Everything you say, you're like, but have you thought about this? You know, and what about that? And, and then here's the facts, are you sure? And I'm like, but, uh, uh, uh. and I used to be like, oh, I'm so mad, he's so rude, you know? But then I'm like, but it's not about him. It's about me being scared that I'm not smart enough, you know, or important enough. So now that I think about it, I'm like, I am important. I'm important to God, right? And um, I don't need to argue back. I already know that this is the answer that I've gotten and no one can take that away from me. <laughs> so now when we talk, I feel so much more confident and I'm like, 
yay, yay me. You know, I'm not even argumentative anymore. And I'm like, that's okay. We'll just decide to agree to disagree. And I'm like, how much you are. Good job, me. <laughs> right. Any thoughts or comments there? I, I feel that a lot because I used to, same thing, I would argue, but it was kind of like, I had to prove them, I had to prove myself right for them to validate me to say, yes, you are right, because I needed them to validate me because I wasn't validated by God. I definitely, I, I, that was one that I definitely had to work on myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny because my friend had the same thing and I'm like, oh, I know how to help you there because you were like me. Uh, she was like, I feel dumb around my brother-in-laws. You know, one's a doctor and the other one's a dentist and everything I say, they always tell me this and this and this and they, they win the argument. And she's like, is it me? Am I saying something wrong? Is it my accent? Do I not know English well enough? And I, I thought about it and I'm like, I don't think so. And I said, could it be that you're, you worry that you don't feel smart enough and it kind of bothers you? But why don't you just believe, let's just say, I am smart enough. I'm an intelligent woman. Okay. Yeah, the injustice for women, right? Sometimes I feel like it's because I'm a girl. They want to make sure that they're bigger and better. And so I'm like, I'm a strong woman. I'm a strong woman. And then I said, also, it's probably their issue. Right? What if they need to squish somebody down to make them feel important? Because if they feel important, they'll be like, okay, that's fair. That's your opinion. This is my opinion. Okay. But then I keep pushing and pushing and pushing until they're right. And I said, why don't you do an experiment? I said, next time, just pick a random topic to talk about. Just pick it and talk about it and give your opinion and see if they do that. If they just, you know, try to say, well, here's a fact, here's an information and try to beat you at that and see if it's not about the topic. It's actually about them needing to feel secure by being better than you. But she's like, but they're confident people. You know, they're really tall, big, strong, confident, lots of friends. And I said, are they? Are they really confident? Because if they really are confident and feel important and loved by God, then do they really need this, you know, sweet little lady <laughs> that you are to be wrong? At your expense, they want to be right. You know, can we all be loving and understanding? And she's like, oh, I guess so. Why do they insist on being right all the time? She said, it's exhausting. And she said, it's not just me. They'll point things out when we go out or whatever, and they'll judge people. And she's like, it's exhausting. Their opinions are so right and other opinions are so wrong. And I'm like, yeah, sounds like they're insecure. And she's like, really? I never thought about that. What do you guys think? 100% that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I feel like if they're secure, yeah, it's so true. you be who you are, I'm who I am, that person can be whatever they like to be, right? Because she's like, oh, I feel sorry for that person. They're like, man, he made, he caused that problem himself, ha, 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 you know? And she's like, ah. right, can she have compassion for people? And then she's like, what's wrong with me, Jade? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, it's your problem. <laughs> it's not your problem. <laughs> One thing, feel confident about your intelligence and your power as a woman. But the second thing is, maybe it's their issue. <laughs> you see? Yeah. So after talking about it, my friend's like, yeah, I'm going to just test that theory next time. <laughs> Pick a silly random topic and see if they're like, rah, 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 rah. I know more than you. <laughs> yeah. And then once you, she releases that, it's not going to bother her anymore. Yeah. You feel free of that. Yeah. You feel that too, Nikki? <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, any questions or comments?
you guys, we, we're going to have a retreat in your area. <laughs> Look at this. We want to go to Hawaii Yay. and we want to do it in Australia. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. We can't wait. <laughs> calm down a bit. Yes. We're going to do it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. We, you know, one of the, there's two ladies that are staying here. They stayed up to three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. So just be mindful when we get together, we don't talk, don't stop talking and we stay up late. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun. It's a wonderful opportunity for, you know, sisterhood. Just connecting to people who understand and just love you and see you for your potential, you know, and not go, oh, this is all these things wrong with you, right? And just say, hey, let's get you better. Let's get you better. That's what I hope to see. And it's like a, a lifetime sisterhood. That's what I want to experience. So we're always going to be friends. We're always going to um, strengthen our faith in God and then serve serve together yeah uh, for me at least it feels really fulfilling like i feel complete and fulfilled to to be together with my soul sisters you guys these guys <laughs> yeah well i'm going to stop the recording so if you guys want to chat you don't have to worry